experiment will bring them back together. Something masterfully diabolical, hideously ugly, and incredibly stinky. <laughs> I shall name you Leroy! Leroy? You can join the fight for the galaxy in an all-new movie, Leroy <laughs> and Stitch. Leroy and Stitch uh, is the next animated review in my celebrating Disney series. This film was released in 2006. Uh, this was a made-for-TV film. I think it first aired on the Disney Channel and then was released direct-to-video after that. And this movie served as the series finale to the Lilo and Stitch TV series, much like Stitch the movie served as the pilot of the, of the Lilo and Stitch series. So this is actually my first time watching the film. I saw Stitch the movie when it came out. Watched a little bit of the Lilo and Stitch series, but I have not seen Leroy and Stitch. So, how does this movie play out on a first-time watch? Well, let's find out. And the, uh, the summary for this film, Lilo, Stitch, Jumba, and Pleakley have finally caught all of Jumba's genetic experiments and found the one true place where each of them belongs. Stitch, Jumba, and Pleakley are offered positions in the Galactic Alliance, turning them down so they can stay on Earth with Lilo, but Lilo realizes her alien friends have places where they belong, and it's finally time to say aloha. There's also another evil experiment that's created along the way named Leroy, and there's like a big battle between Leroy and Stitch by the end of this movie. So like I said, I've not seen this one before. Uh, I remember seeing it advertised, but I think I think when it came out, I had this mentality that especially 2D animated films were just for children, and so I didn't bother to watch Leo and Stitch. Thankfully, I grew out of that mentality the older I got, but I still never got around to seeing Leroy and Stitch. And watching it for the first time, uh, the movie's okay. Like I would put it on a similar vein as Stitch the movie. Like, you can tell this is a made-for-TV film. The animation is not on par with the original movie or even the direct-to-video sequel. This definitely feels like made-for-TV animation, especially during that time. And I think, much like Stitch the movie, I feel like those two movies focus more so on the sci-fi elements with the aliens and the genetic experiments. That I think focusing on that took away from the heart that made the original Elo and Stitch a great movie. Yeah, they had the sci-fi elements in the original movie, but the focus on the film was more so the sister bond between Elo and Nani and how Stitch factored into that. It was kind of like Disney doing an E.T. type story and doing a just as good of a version of it, in my opinion. Uh and then even the Leo and Stitch 2, Stitch has a glitch. Uh, that one, you know, focused more on the family aspect. And even though I had some story issues with it, it still had, you know, more heart to it than compared to this movie and the Stitch movie. But I will say it was good seeing finality to the Leo and Stitch franchise with this movie, uh, seeing where these characters are at. The fact that the stuff that was promised in the Leo and Stitch series where they find all the uh, Jumba's other experiments that are on the loose. Uh, they get contained and they find a place in the world. Uh, they go from bad to good. I like that that gets fulfilled in Leroy and Stitch and seeing where the characters go after that. Uh, there's an occasional emotional moment in there because there's this one part where uh, Jumba, Pleakley, Stitch, they're offered these jobs they don't want to originally because they don't want to break Lilo's heart. But then Lilo eventually agrees that they do, that they should take these positions because that's what they want. And yeah. and uh, there's this one moment where uh, Lilo gives Jumba her favorite Elvis record, which is his cover of Hank Williams' I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry. And you see all these characters reflecting on the loneliness of being apart. That scene was done very well. I think one because I love Elvis's cover of that song. So it's cool that they took kind of like a hidden gem deep cut of Elvis and put it in the uh, directed video made for TV Disney film. I thought it was pretty cool. 
But aside from that one scene, most of the movie just kind of, it's, I mean, it's kind of enjoyable. Like, I didn't mind where they went with it. Uh, you have the hamster wheel character who is busted out of prison and he ends up creating one last experiment to, with, uh, to, uh, try to take on Stitch. That's the Leroy character who's pretty much like Stitch, but it's kind of like his evil twin pretty much. Uh, I kind of wish the movie died more into that. Cause they didn't set up the Leroy stuff until like halfway of the film. And the film's pretty short as it is. I think it's just over an hour. The movie does have an entertaining final fight between all the experiments. They team up with Stitch to take on Leroy and all the Leroy clones. And it was, it's kind of neat to watch. It's not something I was like fully, fully invested in, but I'm like, you know what? If I was a kid watching this, I'd be really on board with this because I like the characters and I'm attached to them. And I thought this would have been a neat way to wrap up the series if I had watched it in full as a kid. Even though it's not a top tier follow up by any means, and I think if I'm ranking the four animated Leo and Stitch film, I think this one's probably my least favorite. But I don't think it's awful by any means. I, it's kind of a mixed bag because it lacks the emotion of why I love Leo and Stitch, which is my favorite film in the post Renaissance Disney era. But it's not a bad movie by any means. Like, there's still some entertainment value to it. I just think, I think if it had focused more on the family dynamic, I think it would have been a more fulfilling film. But it's not awful by any means. At the end of the day, I gave the film a 3 out of 5 on Letterboxd and a 56 out of 100 on my 100-point scale.